Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to Into the Breach. We finished all four of our islands with, I'd have to say, flying colors. Not once did we fail an objective, and we only lost a total of 210 lives in the process, which, if memory serves, was two single buildings. So overall, this has been a pretty smooth run. Although I have to say, the Riftwalkers are a pretty tough team of mechs, and we have made them into a force to be reckoned with. Now, now comes our final struggle. We have to go to the Volcanic Hive, and there's going to be some shenanigans here. So let's go deal with it. Here at our last stand, hopefully, we'll have everything we need. Let's go. With the Vec driven off the islands, you have a chance to wipe them out at their source. You are humanity's last hope. And we have some nice volcanoes here. I'm sure that's not going to be a problem at all. Let's go. So what are we dealing with? We're dealing with all kinds of nasty bugs. We're dealing with all kinds of horrible effects, like an active volcano on this map. That's going to make things interesting, won't it? Let's get our people down here and see what we can do. So, our job is just to survive. It's the only objective we have. We have to survive for five turns, and hopefully we can do that without too much trouble. But, the map's about to get a little bit more complicated. We're going to have to deal with some additional complications. Deploying remote power pylons. They'll keep you connected to the grid. So remember how losing power is our game over uh, state here? Well, guess what? It is still our game over state. Except now we have the added bonus of tons of enemies and an active volcano. So this might be a bit of a problem. We have a super volcano here that is going to be doing all kinds of problems. We have some regular mountain tiles here that just look volcano-y. And generally, things are going to be pretty nasty in a hurry. So this guy is bad news, but we can actually double kill these guys with our Gemini missiles right off the bat. And that sounds like a plan to me. Let's move you over and just let them know we mean business. There we go. Now this guy would probably get killed by this lava flow, except for the fact that he's flying, and I don't know if flying enemies get affected by it, so we're just going to punch him to death. Now we don't have to worry about it. If we move our units over into a better position here, I think we'll be in good shape for our next turn. So far, so good. But we do have to be careful, because if these power pylons go down, they will drain our power grid, and if it goes down, we do lose. So let's end our turn and see what's next. We've got some lovely lava tiles here now to make things more complicated. We've got a little blue guy here. Got some random fiery death raining from the sky. And they really don't like these buildings. Okay, well, let's try and do what we can to harass all of these guys, because it's going to get hot in here in a second. We've got fire raining down from the heavens, which will instantly kill anything it strikes, as we can see from that volcanic projectile descriptor in the bottom. Lava tile behaves like water, but inflicts fire on surviving units. Okay, there you go. Turns out it's a little bit different than I thought. Now, we can punch this crab. The crab has a artillery attack that affects two tiles in a range. Uh, we can just punch him to death, or we can get rid of one of these guys. Depends on how we want to go about it. So, what I'm not clear on here is what exactly we want to do. We can't stand here to attack in the middle or attack both of these with another Gemini missile, because that tile is going to get vaporized by a volcano. And our damage here is only three, which is not quite enough to kill the Alpha Scarab. So we're probably going to have to move him on top of a tile instead, which isn't quite as good, but might have to do. Now, as far as our punching goes, if we wanted to, we could shield swap them, which gives us a shield, but I don't think that's actually necessary right now. I think it's better to try and kill off some of these things, because they are going to be giving us a problem in a minute. Now, what I could do is jump here with the tank and then shoot him into this tile, because that'll leave him with one health after the emergence is blocked, 
which is probably pretty good. The only problem, though, is that this guy is one that we can't really deal with with the artillery, whereas this one can be booped with our artillery out of the way. Probably towards this direction instead, because that way we'd block a spawn, and we still prevent him from attacking those buildings. Meanwhile, these ones go down a little bit easier if we actually try and smack them around a little. So... The only question is, what I really want to do is I want to bring our tank into this position and shoot this crab into this scarab, because that'll kill him, and then we can use the mech punch to kill the other scarab. But if I use the artillery to push him this way, I can't do that. So it looks like pushing him this way is going to be the way to go instead. But that means we have to go all the way over here, which I'm not a huge fan of. But it's not an instant death tile, so we'll go for it. It's going to move our guys around a little, but it's nothing we can't handle. I could also hit them like this, but I don't think that's necessarily actually any good. Because it would bounce him off, leaving him at 2 health, which means the tank can come up and kill him, but we wouldn't be able to also kill him and him. So just for safety's sake, we're going to drop an artillery strike right here. There we- oh, that's actually a death tile. That might have been a mistake. He's going to auto-die. We might need to reset our turn here, because he's going to die before he gets a chance to do anything, so I can actually ignore him. All I have to do is focus on these two, because the environment effect happens before the enemies take their turns. So let's just reset that turn here for a second. There we go. Might be a little overkill to be doing that here, but I think it's still probably fine. Now, that means we have a different set of problems to worry about. We just have to kill these ones. So I think the play here instead is to move the artillery over to here and fire one shell here. That way we can bounce an attack off of the crab, meaning that our tank can come up and boop him for one damage, and we can finish off this guy with a punch. Because that way we can come over here and punch him, come over here, and tank shell him. He's still going to get instant killed by the volcano, so we don't need to worry about him hurting anything. And nobody else is on a death tile, so we can end our turn here. Do I want to reposition first? I might reposition over to here first, just in case. Let's end our turn. And see what's what. Death. All right, these tiles are now on fire, and we've got some more bugs to deal with. We have another river of lava coming in, so we're gonna have to get out of the way of that. They really like standing here, don't they? That is weird. All right, well, it's very convenient for us, if nothing else. So all I have to do here is move over and punch him one. That'll move him onto the fire tile, which means he'll die. These guys might be a little bit trickier to get rid of, especially because I can't get my tank around. Like, if we could move the tank around on this side, it'd be a lot easier to handle them. But they don't have a whole lot of health, so we can probably get rid of them. The only real significant problem is that all of these tiles are going to be coated in lava at the end of the turn, which means our artillery can't really do anything to them. I could move the artillery here and use it to kill this fly. It'll bounce us off the wall here, but that might not be terrible, because then we can maneuver around and push him into the lava. We take one damage on our tank for the potential of clearing them all. Now, which order they attack in? He goes last, so this would happen first. He'd shoot him in the face and kill him, so that's not going to help. But we can, and I think we do, move here and punch. No, no. If we're going to artillery this guy, we don't do this first, because that'll push him into this building and damage it. So if we want to do this play here, where we artillery this guy and bounce ourselves into the mountain to be able to clear all of them this turn, then we can't do that first. This would be the one guy that we don't kill, I think, in this... No, we'd kill him too. Okay, we're gonna go for this strategy. It does one damage to us, but lets us kill everything else. I could have boosted over and then done something, but I can't boost over to this position, so this is a better play here. 
There we go, because now the fire damage happens first, then the lava spreads and kills him, and we've killed them all in one turn still. Let's end our turn. I could move again, but I actually kind of want to be on this side of the map to deal with these guys. We have some artillery assistance here, most likely, but we're going to have to deal with the problem as it shows up. Let's go. Fire damage. And here comes the lava. Poor little crab. Down he goes. Charger comes out in the fire. It's the alpha one, too. Another charger comes up beside him, and we have an explosive one. Is that what this one does? The Scion Tyrant? What does he do? He gives them all... All player units take one damage at the end of every turn. Oh, that's nasty. Thankfully, he only has two health, so we can just boop him to death. And that won't be a problem. Thankfully, this guy's already on fire. So all I have to do to him is move over here and sock him one and put him into this tile, which isn't a huge difference, but then he'll die anyway. This friendly beetle here is about to dive into lava and kill himself, and our cannon mech can kill the tyrant. Done. So, let's move our punching mech over to here. Sock him one, because the fire does happen before anything else. And this guy we can actually just ignore. I'm going to shoot him once just for fun, maybe. Actually, I kind of want to get over here. You know, I don't think we ever got the achievement for knocking three enemies into water. I don't think we're going to get it now either, but I don't think we ever got it. I think I can just ignore him, because he's going to go straight into lava and die. So I'm going to just bring our artillery into a little bit more of a central position. This is our last turn anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I could Gemini Missile him to ensure he dies, but I'm going to hold on to that, because I don't know if we're going to need it or not. Let's end our turn. Okay. Into the lava with you? Yep, into the lava with you. Incoming seismic activity. Brace yourselves. And down we go. Turns out... We're not done here. Sending down power pylons. Keep them operational. We don't have any more. My calculations indicate even a hundred mechs couldn't bring this hive down. Deploying a Renfield bomb. Defend it while it primes and it will destroy the hive. Nice drop there. Hit it right on a bug. Demolition authorization and defensive Renfield bomb. Missed the last word there. What are we dealing with here? We have a, a boss charger. We don't know what this thing is. Is this thing throwing grenades? That's not a good time. The Alpha Blobber. I can't see what he does. There we go. Throw a massive blob that will explode. That doesn't sound good. The Beetle Leader charges and lights every tile in the path on fire. Hmm. That's good. And he's going for our power cells there. So we have a pretty nasty start here. We can just punch this guy. But that doesn't actually solve the problem. Because he's just going to attack this way. And then we have three more Vex spawning. And this thing's going to come over here and explode. I have a feeling our artillery is going to need to shoot this. Shoot here. I mean, come here and shoot here. Or... We could use... So, I don't know if this thing still explodes when it dies. I don't think it does. So if we were to take the cannon mech, we could jump over to here and shove it under that environmental uh, damage, which would cause it to die. And then we could jump again over to here and push this guy over one, which doesn't make a huge difference. The artillery here... So this beetle leader is a problem. He just has too much health. We have a lot going on here that we need to deal with. We have to kill, we have to move or kill this thing. We have to get him out the way. We can ignore the beetle leader for now because he's just going to hit this mountain tile. So that's fine. We can actually ignore him this turn, but this turn only. And we have to kill 
this guy and this thing. Thankfully, they're not too tough. Or at least maneuver him. If I can push him over one tile, he kills himself. And this guy has five health, which puts him just outside the range of what we can easily kill. Now, I could jump to here and shove this guy out the way, but I think that'll also move the bomb. The bomb can't be set on fire, but can otherwise be killed. So I could jump here and then jump here, which would bounce him off this guy, which would allow us to punch him to death, but then I can't get our, our, our tank out the way. So that would let us kill the Alpha Scorpion, but it's not actually a very good move. The artillery... Is there any way I can push this guy without using the artillery? So if I just push him over one, he kills himself, and that's a pretty good outcome. I might need to stand over here and move him. Or I can just Gemini Missile him. I have both my uses back. So if I want to, that might be what we do here. I could theoretically move over and try and Gemini him just to kill him outright. I could hit the Beetle Leader with that if I move here. Okay. Okay, here's here's a potential play. Here's a potential play. We take the artillery to this tile. We use the Gemini missiles to kill this beetle and hit him for four, which leaves him with two HP, I believe. And then we can use the cannon mech to take one shot at him and to jump over to here to push this blob into the death tile, which should kill it before it actually blows up. So it should not explode on our Renfeld bomb. That would mean we just have to punch this guy, which admittedly doesn't kill him, but also doesn't kill us. That keeps us most of, most of our health intact and leaves him on one, which means we should be able to kill him with some other means. So that might be the play here. We move over to here. We Gemini Missile here. We follow up with a cannon shot on the boss. He goes down. We boost her over to here to push this thing into the death area. Do we punch this guy? Or do we flip him? I think we just want to punch him for now for the extra damage. The flip is kind of neat, but it doesn't do anything significant for us here. It's not going to attack anything else. It would give us a shield, which might be handy, but I think it's better to just sock him one. Is there anywhere I need to move you... I'm going to leave you in the middle here. Okay, let's end our turn then. Boulder kills him. He does not explode after the boulder hits, which is what we wanted. What do we get? Alpha Scorpion hits nothing. Uh-oh, Tyrant. The Tyrants are not good. Thankfully, the rest of these guys are not such a big deal. The Charger's okay. This guy needs to go. We need to kill him in a hurry. On the plus side, they're being very cooperative as far as the positioning goes. On the downside, our artillery is absolutely stuck right now. He can't do anything. So that's not so great. So we're going to need to kill this blob here just so that he can get out of this death tile. Because as we can see, there is an effect here, which is tentacles. This unit will die, and the tile will turn into lava, which is targeting all of our starting tiles. So that's not quite so good. Now, how are we going to deal with all of this mess? At the end of the turn... At the end of every turn, we take one damage to all of our units. That's... that's a problem. So what we could do here is hmm. yeah this is nasty this guy kind of needs to die I can kill him if I want I can bring the mech over here and super punch him to death unfortunately that leaves all of this mess still intact our artillery can kill this thing if we want but he won't be able to move afterwards which means he dies our cannon mech could Jump? Does that help us? 
If we jump, does it push the bomb? Yes, it does. So we can actually just move the bomb out the way if we want, and then this guy charges nothing and dies. The significant things that need to happen is we need to kill this explosive enemy, because that lets our artillery get out the way and means this attack does nothing. We need to kill this Leaper, who has one health left. So I think the play here is jump to here, shoot this guy. That removes the bomb from the line of danger, kills that bug, and we kill him. We have to use our punching mech to punch this grenade, because that allows us to move the artillery out of the way and kill the Scion. I think that's the play. It means we have to leave this guy alive, but it allows us to make sure we don't take a damage for nothing at the end of the turn and nobody else gets hurt. It does mean that if we punch this thing, though, it flips it... No, I can actually use the shield attack on him that gives us a free shield, doesn't do anything to its attack direction, and kills it, and lets us still get out. I think that's the play. So we're going to start by boosting this over, move the bomb out of the line of danger, kill that enemy. We bring our punching mech over, use our shield slam to kill the grenade and generate a shield on us, which, as I understand, allows us to ignore the first point of damage we take from any negative effects, which is pretty sweet. This means we can actually use them to block a spawn or do whatever we want, and only something that actually hurts us removes the shield too, so that's pretty cool too. Now our artillery moves to here, and we can actually double kill this. Even better than I was expecting. Kills the Scion, pushes him into the lava. That is awesome. Okay, we have a Hornet left here, which is fine, and this guy kills himself, which is A-OK -okay by me. We could block one of these spawns, but since we have victory in three turns, they're going to keep showing up, so we'd rather just deal with three enemies this turn than having to deal with a whole bunch later. Let's end our turn and see how this plays out now. I think I actually want you to stand... No, there's fine. Let's end our turn. The tentacles destroy the earth around us. It attacks the lava. He charges into the lava. We have more falling rocks coming in. That might be a little bit annoying, but we should be able to probably Gemini Missile him to not have to deal with that. This this rock barrier effect the Alpha Diggers have is really nasty. Because uh, it means it's really hard to actually get to them. And they hit pretty hard, so this would be a problem if we didn't have a way to do 4 damage around a wall. But we do, so we should be okay. So what I'm seeing here is move the mech to here. Punch this guy over 1. That way it takes... Uh, th 4 damage from the punch blocks the spawn and takes 1 damage and attacks nothing. This Hornet is probably going to get shot by our tank, and if I can get him that far. And the Artillery is going to move over 1 and Gemini Rocket the Digger. I think that is definitely the maneuver here. It's a good use of our Gemini Rockets, gets him out the way. We still have a shield on, so if I want I can actually block this spawn as well. And that'll make things even easier next turn. Because we're immune to damage, so it doesn't even hurt us. And then we can move over to here. Oh no, that wasn't a good move at all. Oh, we can move to here. That'll work. Okay. I was thinking we can't shoot him without bumping him into the building there. But we actually can do it, we just have to be a little bit more careful about it. Okay. And this way, they're only going to get to spawn one enemy for their last turn. And we should be okay here, after all. Things were looking a little dicey there, but we managed to do it with some uh, convenient play. So now we end our turn. And it turns out that Shield Slam ability was actually important. Because it allowed us to clear that bomb without anything bad happening. We have a whole row of tentacles showing up. Archimedes, you didn't even take damage, my dude. <laughs> Victory in one turn, but there's still five spawns happening? That's a little worrying. Also, I can't stand in this row at all, because it's all going to explode, which is too bad, because I'd really like to push this guy into the lava, but I can't do that without sacrificing Abe for no reason. So, that's not going to happen. How else can I clear this? I actually don't know how to clear this without staying in this position, unless... 
unless we do something kind of dumb and punch him out of the way on purpose. Is there a way that allows us to stand here and... Yeah, we can totally do it. <laughs> all right. All right. Now this... Now this is what we call strategy. We got the watery grave achievement on the last turn of the last battle. That's pretty sweet. And now we use shenanigans to not take any damage from it because we have the boosters on our tank. I knew that ability was good. That was awesome, especially with Silica's double attack move. All right, I think we're safe now. I think we just, I think we got this. Can I hit this for nothing? I can. I can just give myself a shield at the end of my turn. That's awesome. All right. Well, I think we're in good shape here, but let's end the turn and see if anything else goes down. A huge row of tentacles. The Renfield bomb is ready. I recommend you leave now or you'll share a grave with the Vec. I depart in search of another timeline as advanced as my original one. Our war's not yet won. Keep traveling, keep fighting. Temporal excavation initiated. Re engaging Vec onto the timeline with new combat data. Goodbye, Vec. Victory is ours. And that is a big explosion. <laughs> All right. Not bad. Very reminiscent of FTL is our final screen here. Victory. Thanks to the valiant efforts of Archimedes, Silica, and Abisamu. The Vec Hive has been destroyed, saving this timeline from ultimate doom. Humanity can now begin to recover from the destruction wrought by the Vec. Island civilian lives protected, 19,790. That's quite a lot. Total Earth lives saved, approximately 4.6 billion. Let's go. And that puts us into the credits. We did it. Not bad at all. Now, we had a pretty high score there, and given this was our, like, second ever playthrough, that might seem, like, a little bit off-putting, but I actually don't mind. I feel like the the challenge of getting that good outcome kind of makes it worthwhile for me. And it helps as well that it turns out the Riftwalkers are a pretty powerful squad. I've tried one mission with a different team and it was quite a bit harder, I found. So we may find, if you guys enjoyed this series, that we'll try another one with a different team. And even playing on normal still, that might make things a whole lot more difficult. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But either way, I think that this game is really cool. It really gives you that like puzzle-solving challenge, and it's it's awesome when you can come up with moves, even like we did in our last turn there, where you can do something that you didn't think was going to work because you've set yourselves up to be able to do it. Either way, though, we've made it to the end, but there's still a couple things to look at here, so let's see. We've saved our timeline, and now we can take one of these pilots to help us out in our next playthrough. I know Silica is incredible, we know in advance that that is a really good ability. But we have to consider that it takes two power to be able to turn on. At the start of a new mission, that might not be amazing. We could also take Abe if we want, or we could take Archimedes. Because I know Silica is incredible, I'm kind of in, kind of tempted not to bring them. Because we use Silica pretty heavily in this playthrough. Archimedes is also really good. All of these uh, AI units tend to be pretty incredible. But I'm tempted to not bring them with us just because we know they're so good. So I want to try and take something that gives us a little bit more challenge. I think we're going to take Abe this time. He'll be our carryover pilot. And that way we'll have a tougher mech at the very beginning with his armored ability. And we'll start with that extra reactor power and movement. But we won't potentially have these crazy powerful guys right off the bat. Keep in mind though, many of the pilots have really good abilities. So... It's not just these guys. There's all kinds of excellent pilot abilities we can take. Let's take Abe, though, this time. And now we're back. Back at the start. But there's still some things to look at. First of all, we got all three of our achievements with the Riftwalkers. And if we go into the achievements menu, we'll see there's actually quite a few achievements that are still remaining to be earned. There's three for all of the remaining squads, which gives us a total of 27 achievements just on those guys alone. 
There's achievements here that we've earned already for not failing any objectives on an island, not taking any building damage on an island, and getting 9 reputation. The pilot ones for reaching max level have 3 pilots at max level and having 6 pilots. And we've also got this one, one of the challenge run objectives, for finishing three islands without failing any objectives, as well as this one for finishing three islands without dropping below four power. However, oops, there are quite a few other challenge runs and things we may have to try for here at some point, like finishing three islands without equipping any new pilots or weapons on any of your gear. This one for finishing three islands destroying every time pod you find on purpose. And Engineering Dropout here, which is for finishing three islands without using any weapon modifications. All kinds of interesting challenges. There's some other ones here, like having one pilot do the final boss fight three times. One here for encountering a familiar face, which I don't know what that means yet. It looks like a mantis to me, though. And that's weird. <laughs> I don't know what that's going to do yet. And we've got a bunch of other interesting things here for overall metagame achievements for meeting many different types of difficulties and all kinds of cool stuff. So, next time we may come back and try some of this again. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, let me know what you thought about this series, though. I've had a lot of fun playing through it, even if uh, there were occasional moments where we had a crushing victory. There were still quite a few where we had to really struggle our way through those battles. And hopefully you guys have found this fun. Either way, until next time, this has been Vanguard of Valor. And bye-bye.